the purpose of the trust is to preserve what we have in the collection forever for everyone. During the winter we try and uh, catch up with all the objects in the collection. We look at them really throughout the year every day but the winter is really a time where we try and give objects a bit of a rest from exposures to light, from access by people, fluctuations in relative humidity is something that we control throughout the year but we're trying to stabilize things even more in the winter and by for example covering furniture uh, it gives us a chance to work more in depth on other pieces in the collection so for example we work from one room to another we work very intently in one room checking condition of objects getting conservators in to do more detailed treatment by closing some of the rooms off we enable that collection to have a bit more of a rest and um, stay fresh. Access is always a delicate balance we have to uh, strike. The house was obviously built for a much much smaller uh, family. Now we've got 130,000, 140,000 visitors currently uh, which is steadily on the increase and having that much access throughout a building is something that has to be managed quite delicately. So um, we have set uh, guidances as to how many people should be in one room at, at a certain time uh, just to keep objects safe, to keep the collection safe, to keep the structure of the building safe. Some surfaces that haven't changed within 500 years, the paint layers, so if somebody touches that, people have got gre grease in their hands, acids in their hands, this can cause da uh, damage or just brushing against something, having a wet coat, dripping water on, onto an object can cause permanent damage. Most of our objects we've got in this house, 98% of the collection is indigenous, so was here with the family and uh, they're irreplaceable objects. They're objects that were created by craftspeople that uh, really are irreplaceable. They can't be recreated and uh, conservation can be very very costly and still mean that the object uh, has lost part of its original identity. As conservators we really treat uh, anything. Those fixtures and fittings that come with the house, like a light switch for example, can be just as important to us as conservators because it tells a story of this place and is part of the spirit of this place and has therefore the most the same importance as an important piece of art or an important painting and has to be preserved and treated with the same kind of respect. We've got uh, a team of conservation volunteers now that we've trained up throughout the years and that are constantly being uh, trained up and uh, what happens is we will uh, work in one area for example, so if I talk about the Oak Gallery for example, and uh, look really at a room from top to bottom, we'll start with the uh, walls for example, to start with the ceiling, have scaffolding in the room and work off scaffolding. Uh, we remove dust which attracts moisture and therefore and is mainly organic therefore food for pests which we try to avoid having in a place um, so the removal of that that dust is very important it can encourage mold growth mold can cause staining and permanent damage and uh, so we try and remove this dust we work with vacuum cleaners and uh, small brushes really uh, different kinds of brushes and um, really work from top to bottom uh, cleaning everything, examining everything. If we see problems, we take photographs, we might pass a problem onto a conservator. Uh, then look at each individual object. Each object has got a condition report form, uh, which will have a, an image of the object and uh, where previous uh, damage has been marked, uh, where it's been measured, where we can keep an eye on whether there's a development in the damage. We obviously want to share the enthusiasm uh, we have about the history of this property and share what we know about these historic objects that we have in the collection tell the story of the family and therefore people need to come in to see this um, but with every time whether somebody comes in or a large group of people comes in the humidity rises and fluctuations in humidity can cause uh, damage uh, to objects people shed hair skin clothing which increases the dust levels um, people might be bringing in pests from outside inadvertently so uh, that can be 
wanting to eat organic materials and therefore might be doing damage. So there is a constant balance that we have to strike. So some of the rooms uh, might be roped off, some areas might be roped off just to protect something quite fragile. Uh, we might ask people to remove the dirt from their shoes or over shoes just because the sheer number of people that now come through and walk on a carpet that was perhaps only there for 10 people, now 130,000 people, so the accumulative effect that people have by coming in. Uh, we need to man manage this. So the, the rooms up here, uh, the two bedrooms, gallery bedroom, south bedroom and the large oak gallery that we've got here. We've done these rooms already, we've uh, cleaned all the ceiling, the walls, uh, in this case uh, 1520s wall panelling with soft pony hair brushes. We've got some plans for conservation and action next year where we might be cleaning uh, the sculptures a bit more in depth because it hasn't been done for a very long time but this can happen in front of the public and it's very very interesting for public to see. I've been called in here today to um, give my attention to this painting because they have discovered some mold on the front of the painting and apparently they've already dusted it off slightly mm -hmm. but um, I'm really here to just give it some more attention um, I'm, I found some flaking on the frame, there was okay. some gild, loose gilding which I've consolidated and I'm going to dust the front and the back and I'm really looking more closely at the paint surface. Obviously lots to do, what is it I can help you with? What I would suggest is if I lift the painting, okay. pass it over to you. And this is an important painting of the vine because this is of Charles Chute who um, donated the vine to the National Trust in 1956. So we're talking about a valuable piece of artwork here for the house. I'm going to put him face down on the table. Okie dokie. And I will give you my little museum vacuum cleaner, which is especially designed Hoover, which is being used for paintings. Oh, so I'm disturbing the dust, and as I do so, I'm vacuuming it up just exactly. like that. I mean, am I pressing down too hard? You're doing really well. Thank you very much. I'm already thinking of the next step. Oh, okay. So, and what is the next step? The next step would be, um, you can see all these little wooden keys, uh -huh. which are obviously sitting in the so-called stretcher to, so you're able to expand the canvas so it has enough tension. Mm -hmm. And so I need to drill holes into these little wedges. And it has happened before that people have drilled through canvases. It sounds far too delicate for me. <laughs> I've got lots of other jobs I need to do. <laughs> I'm going to leave you to it. Thank you very much, Sophie. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, and thank you very much for your help.